It's true. Our president takes drugs. I'm taking it, hydroxychloroquine. When? Right yeah. now, yeah. I was just waiting to see your eyes light up when I said this, but you know when I announced this. But I have been taking it for about a week, a week for about a week and a half. Every day. At some point, every day, I take a pill every day. Hmm. Yes, the president did the unthinkable. He told you he was taking a drug prescribed to him by a White House doctor. Why? Because he tells us everything, and the media's addled brains bubbled like cracked eggs on a hot sidewalk. The president of the United States said today he is taking a drug to prevent coronavirus that the FDA warns is dangerous and study after study now show is useless against the virus. He is taking an unproven drug that medical experts warn can have harmful side effects. This is really deadly serious. It is quite dangerous. Why does he bring up this hydroxychloroquine? I don't even know that he's really taking it, by the way. <laughs> and that's just what they said between tokes. Now, remember, Trump hadn't said he was taking some overpriced exotic root from the rainforest that Gwyneth Paltrow claims loosened her chakras. He wasn't licking some toxic acid off an Amazon frog rescued from Joe Rogan's isolation tank. No, he took a reliable drug under the best supervision that's been around a half century. Now, what exactly did Chris Cuomo take, Kaylee? Cuomo mocked the president for this, um, and interestingly, I found this out just before coming here, um, hydroxychloroquine, of course, is an FDA-approved medication with a long-proven track record for safety, and it turns out um, that Chris Cuomo took a, a less safe version um, of it called Quinine, which the FDA removed from the market in 2006 because of its serious side effects, including death. So really interesting to have that criticism of the president. Oh, she's good. But Cuomo, he's a hypocrisy machine. He says, don't break quarantine. Then he does. Don't take risky meds. Then he does. He accuses people of not taking the virus seriously. And then he does this. Is it true that this was the swab that the nurse was actually using on you and that at first... It went into your nose and disappeared so that in scale, this was the actual swab that was being used to fit up that double barrel shotgun that you have mounted on the front of your pretty face. Uh, he's like a birthday magician on drugs. Carrot Top, I know you're watching. Someone broke into your prop closet. Call the cops. You know, I don't mind mixing humor with news, but do the news first. And the news hasn't been good, at least for the elderly in rest homes who died by the thousands under Governor Cuomo. And what did the press do? They lionized him in part because of these adorable CNN routines. Imagine if I pulled out a giant swab. CNN would condemn my depraved indifference to death. It makes you wonder when you look at Chris or Don Lemon, what are they? News Commentary, prop comics. At Fox, you know what we are. I do commentary. Brett Baer does news. Then we hot tub like craven beasts. But CNN is a garbage salad. Dudes doing commentary is news. And so as the media gushed over Andy, they smeared Florida's governor, who had enough. You got a lot of people in your profession who waxed poetically for weeks and weeks about how Florida was going to be just like New York. Wait two weeks, Florida's going to be next. Just like Italy, wait two weeks. Well, hell, we're eight weeks away from that, and it hasn't happened. I think whatever Trump has is contagious. It's not corona, but cojones. Then, did you hear? Trump didn't wear his mask briefly in Michigan. Some people put it in perspective, except this loon. Is the president no longer welcome in Michigan? Well, I will say, speaking on behalf of my department and my office, that's right. The president is like a petulant child uh, who refuses to follow the rules. He is a ridiculous person, and I am ashamed to have him be president of the United States of America. And I hope that the voters of Michigan will remember this back in, uh, in when November comes, that he didn't care enough about their safety. He didn't care about their welfare. Nice work, crazy lady. Now do the guy who brutalized an elderly person in a Michigan nursing home. Where was the care and safety in that? Yeah, she freaks out about the mask, but not that. In her own state? Nice priorities, you joke. 
It's also funny watching people like her and reporters go after Trump for not wearing a mask as they aren't wearing a mask either. Apparently, their message is more important than the president's. Meanwhile, left-wing writer Katha Pollitt said this week she'd vote for Biden even if he ate babies. How does one respond? Clearly, she's not a vegan. Shame on her. But she can get away with saying that because it's not offensive to her peers. Because she said baby. She didn't say black baby, gay baby, trans baby. That would have been too far. But the generic baby, that's okay. Especially since Planned Parenthood just got $80 million from the Paycheck Protection Plan, which was to aid small businesses during the pandemic. How is America's largest abortion business small? I get it. Their victims are. So is the media truly concerned about Trump's health? No. It's just that the media loves knowing things you don't. It validates the superiority necessary for their insecure elite class. It's why they faint at the thought of taking an anti-malarial pill, but eat shrooms by the pound. It's why they think nuclear power is evil, but crystal healing rules. They need to be first. And once something cool becomes popular, they hate it. The media loves to boast about the hot Broadway play you can't get tickets to. For a year, they tried to out Hamilton each other. Oh, did you get tickets yet? Yeah, they're so expensive. We got ours through a friend of a friend. This special class loves the free stuff, the secret stuff, the stuff they can get illegally, and they'll never share it with you. But Trump's the opposite. If he likes something, he'll tell you about it. It's not like he's above you, and that's weird. Now, the jury's out on this drug, seems useless at the end stage, but maybe, maybe helpful in the early phase. It's a line of defense that you assess with your doctor, idiots like me. You can't buy it at the GNC. It's prescribed, again, by a doctor, not a politician. No wonder Nancy's ticked. He's our president, and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved uh, by the scientist, especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, what is morbidly obese, they say. That's a pretty good joke. Now do Jerry Nadler or uh, Stacy Keach. Just kidding. You can only fat shame some people. But she's got game, and Joe Biden could learn from her. Nancy, I need new nicknames for the president. I like President Tweety, because, you know, the bird, they're both orange. How about um, morbidly obese? Uh, no, no, no. We, we need more hyphens in there. Racist and philanderer. Still too short. I like my insults long, like a Hannity monologue. How about degenerate unpresidential, obese, lying, Russian, racist, uh, pony soldier. Ha, <laughs> ha, yeah. Pony soldier. That hits him. Makes the hair on my legs stand up. I'm going to reach in and touch it. Come on. Real quick. I'll close my eyes. I, I, I'm in San Francisco. Oh, love San Fran. And that golden stake bridge. <laughs> Oh, hold on. Hold. Got to go. That's Hunter. <laughs> but Nana shouldn't be nailing Trump for managing his own health unless she's got better info than his doc. And it's cute how our vain overclasses go after a person taking a legal drug during a pandemic. What would happen if Trump said he loved Botox and Adderall? The entire press would have to quit both. They'd get nothing done but the crying. The good news, we believe life is getting good again. Cases are dramatically declining, and a new Gallup poll shows people are ha happier more than a month ago. They sense good things, and it ain't a wrinkle cream. This perspective diverges from the misery media who see grim horizons beyond their stretched faces. We know we've done great, but we are done hiding, and we're done leaving it to the media and their lies. It's time to get up, go outside, and get to work. We can do this. We already have. It's pretty simple. Wash your hands a lot, put on a mask a lot, don't hug strangers, protect the elderly, and get to work, unless you're the media. Maybe you should sit this one out. You've done enough damage. Have you thought about a broccoli enema? I know someone who knows someone who could squeeze you in.